Today, tennis is all about grit, spin, and power, largely thanks to the incredible racket tech. Boom! Good recovery! Good night! But without innovators like Princeton-based aluminum engineers George Archie Vaughn and Dick Hargrave and their company Mark Corporation, the game may never have reached the unreal level we now enjoy today. The aluminum company was stationed in a potato barn. The original potato barn didn't have any electricity or very little electricity. Their company started making aluminum products, not tennis rackets, but bulletin boards and whatnot. And along came Paul Sullivan from Spalding with this tennis racket opportunity. We made a couple of hand built with jigs and fixtures and things that would end up in a retail store, we would hope. The first racket they made, the Smasher, did not fare that well. There was a lot of room for improvement. This was the early days of the aluminum tennis racket. Despite the shortcomings of the Smasher, the word was out on their aluminum tennis racket, and another major player in the sporting industry got in touch, Howard Head. Howard Head came in one day and said, we want you to develop a tennis racket for us. And I said, well, we happen to be making one right now, not so good, falls apart all the time. But he said, well, keep going, it's selling well. And so we tried to fix it and we would change the alloy to a stronger alloy. So Howard Head, without much fanfare, gave them a huge order of tens of thousands of rackets, which all of a sudden, Christmas of one of their first years in business, they had to fill this huge order from Head, which was really exciting. Some of the big names in tennis were starting to play with my dad's racket. Arthur Ashe, Charlie Passarell, Bob Lutz, Stan Smith. The next opportunity that came was this oversized racket idea from Prince, and they, they took it head on, no pun intended. It was a little bit of a controversial racket because oversized rackets then were just not a thing. Once Pam Shriver had that racket in her hand and the world saw her using the Prince racket, it really propelled it into a, a new dimension. She basically went from nothing to pretty damn good with the help of the racket. People would go out to the club and they didn't mind buying $25 for a tennis racket. And the game is getting popular. After this latest success, Bark was acquired by AMF, the parent company of Head. Dad became president of AMF Racket Sports Division, so things didn't change on the ground level much as far as their operations, but they were obviously in, into a whole larger game. As the racket business evolved and as Mark and AMF Head evolved, they then branched into new materials, one being graphite. All graphite rackets made out of Boulder, Colorado. You can get lighter and stronger. It was better than the other ones, a better racket. My dad started out as an engineer and inventor with great ideas in his head, not necessarily to create a tennis racket or a tennis business. It was fascinating to see how he pioneered that and wrote it into a really successful company uh, and how tennis became his career. It was a good, good product at the right time. All you want is strong and light. It's the same with airplanes. It's the same with every, every sporting good. Light and strong. And you'd be okay, but you've got to design with that in mind. 